This is an update on the RF preamp board for the 2020. You might remember in the previous episode of this series that I'd found that there had been considerable modification to this board intentionally to keep it going on 80 metres if no other band. Well, what I've discovered, I've discovered several things, so I'll go through them. Um, let's talk about this earthing first. So the first thing I'll do is get the switch in a position where you can see. Now on the switch they've gone to the trouble of connecting the shaft to this back plane of the switch. Now this is something I hadn't seen on wafer switches before. I'd seen multi-segmented wafer switches for multiple pole contacts but I've never seen one that's actually got two lots of sliding contacts. So if you look carefully on that side we've got a disc that rotates and contacts that it goes to and the the wiping contact, the moving contact, is right down the bottom on these. And then when we go on the other side there's another disc with another set of contacts. So on this bank of switches they've gone to the trouble of earthing the coupling shaft between the wafers and each of these back set of wiping contacts is earthed. When you look underneath that single wiping contact, which is here and here and here, uh, all go to earth. So you've got discs on the back which are connected to earth and they in, in turn have been soldered to the shaft. So this whole shaft assembly, which would be earthed by virtue of this screwing onto the plate which is one of the points of attachment to the transceiver it's earthed, so it's earthed here as well and so is this disc now none of that's on the, whoops, sorry camera none of that's on the circuit diagram so uh, that was something new that I'd discovered um, I'd also discovered this coil which is the input coil from the aerial for 80 metres that should be, or it should be one of those. But as you can see, it's been replaced. I told you the FETs had been replaced. And before we had a bridge going from the wiping contact of the switch here to the 80 metre position, so I've removed that. And there was also another wire on the input to the board under here, going from there to there, which meant that this RF preamp section was permanently on 80 metres. Yeah. Whether you were switched to another band or not with the output of the switch, which is where the IF is going through, it didn't matter. Um, this part was always on 80 metres and this is why I was getting some problems. So having removed them and the connection underneath and having switched the switch, uh, fixed the switch contacts which were these and one in here or both of them in there it's got a very good chance of working now what was throwing me a little bit before is something else that's unusual with this switch and that is that instead of one wiping contact and say 11 different positions to switch that wiping contact to what they've done with this one is they've got two wiping contacts on each switch so two there, two there and two on this one and they've got ten positions which that switch can switch to so they've got a better way of making sure the switch doesn't go intermittent at least on the wiping contact by having two but intentionally these ones, I, I think intentionally, these ones and these ones had been lifted so that the rest of the switch or these two at least um, weren't interfering with the 80 meter operation on this one. So even if you're on the 10 meter band or the 20 meter band or any other band other than 80 meters you're still getting this 80 meter effect. 
which is why I was picking up stations near the IF frequency and the sensitivity was down on all the other bands. Anyhow, it, um, it seems to me as if it might actually work uh, now. Uh, this, this wire underneath uh, seems to be okay, it seems to be original. That's, that's not a bridge. Um, the output of that FET does have to go to that switch. Uh, the FET that's been put in here, which is the 40673 and the 3SK45 that's been put in there, both instead of 3SK35s, seem to be in order and it seems as if they're, um, they're working properly. I've gone and connected up, um, uh, should I say, I've, I've cleaned up a lot of the board, there was a lot of flux remaining around the board from the work that had been done on it. So I still think that there's been some sort of damage to this board such as a lightning strike or something which has upset the two FETs and so they've been replaced but I think this 80 metre modification is, is something else. Why the previous owner didn't just fix the switch assembly and um, and and then continue on all the bands and why he made it an 80 metre only radio I really don't know but the next part of the uh, job will be to put it back in the transceiver or at least connect it up to the transceiver before reinstalling it and see if I can get it going properly and um, just check all the bands maybe with a signal generator to see that the sensitivity is similar on them all and then there's going to have to be some at least checking of alignment because there's lots of adjustments um, there's two for each band or except for 80 meters because that one's no longer adjustable but there's one for 80 meters and there'll be another two for all the other bands um, and there's a few other chokes but they're at the IF uh, and transformers at the IF frequency so they may be alright but all this has been considerably modified and mucked around with so I'll probably have to do something about that. So the next video this board will be connected up to the transceiver and um, we'll see how she goes. Fingers crossed. See you then.